Hello there. Now it's been a while since I've done this, but I used to do short videos about retro news, uh, what's happening in the community, and just basically things I've seen which I'm interested in over the past few weeks or months. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to bring back with this video. Maybe once a month we can explore just what's been happening in the retro community. So first, I just want to say, having reached 100,000 subscribers, a massive thank you to everyone who watches my videos, my patrons, anyone who interacts, comments. It's been one hell of a ride, and I'm looking forward to carrying on that ride with lots of new videos on the horizon. I do have a special video I'll be doing soon to commemorate this occasion, one for YouTube channel and an exclusive one for patrons. So keep tuned, stay tuned, watch out for that. Now there's a, there was a delay on the boards arriving apparently, but everything seems to be in order now and apparently the new boards do fit inside a regular Spectrum case, which is nice. I'm not getting one of the boards, I'm getting one of the full packages, so I'm looking forward to getting that in January time, but this looks like one of the few Kickstarters which has come to fruition and looks like a high quality product. Very excited for that. Also, another Kickstarter which has recently smashed past its goal is the Crash Annual 2018, which, what did it get? Got £45,000 just over, so it's got loads of stretch goals, a Crash Smash badge, a pentagram map by Oliver Frey, extra pages, a calendar. That looks awesome. When is when's it coming? When 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 do we expect delivery of this amazing early November? So that's another one which I'll cover on the channel where it arrives. Something that caught my attention on indie retro news is the low res jam. Now the low res jam is a competition which is run. I think it skipped last year, but the idea is to create games in 64 by 64 pixels. And I've been create, playing, I think it's called Mini FPS, but <laughs> something about that just, well, not something about it, but the fact that it looks like a pixelated mess reminds me of trying to get Doom to work on 386 machines back in the 90s. And it plays really quite well. There's, there's also some other good games on there as well, like there's like another world mock ups and things like that which make use of this 64 by 64 tile area and it's definitely worth having a look at. New Spectrum game from Rucksack Games aka John Blythe and this is called Circuitry. Now Circuitry looks like my sort of game. It reminds me of Project Future for the Spectrum but you're inside a computer and have to navigate around a maze arena so that is a game I think I'll be doing a quick play on. Uh, I'll put a link below so that you can download it. It looks rather splendid, I must say. So I don't know if you saw it, but on geek.com, there was an interesting article about Event Horizon. Now Event Horizon is a film from what, the late 90s, 1997, which is underrated. It could have been a really good film, but they hacked it apart. And I still really like it, I, I enjoy it massively, but there's some sort of theory that it's actually a prequel to Warhammer 40,000. It kind of makes sense because they have warp drives in the Event Horizon ship like they do in Warhammer and this warp drive took them to hell, essentially. Stuck. Which is what happens in Warhammer, you go through to the realm of chaos or whatever you call it and it's just an interesting concept and apparently the the bloke who wrote the film made the film mentioned that he was inspired by Warhammer 40,000 so that was just an interesting twist which appealed to my senses on some level also something that appealed to my senses on some level is that the US nuclear force and this is from the BBC website U US nuclear force is very US nuclear force the army they still use floppy disks, like five and a quarter inch, three and a half inch disks, which I think is lovely. You get all these legacy systems, don't you, which still have to use all this dated technology, and it would be marvellous to just go in 
and see that. Maybe not with the nuclear weapons hanging about, I'm sure they're separate from the computers, but it gives you reassurance that Skynet is probably quite a number of years away. I mean, if we're still using floppy disks, then artificial intelligence isn't likely to come anytime soon, is it? Did you see, this is from the website, I don't know, it, it was on Reddit, but some Reddit bloke, LO64N, he picked up a super rare Atari 2700. Now this was the Atari which was supposed to have wireless controllers, but Atari canned it because the range of these wireless controllers was something ridiculous, like 400 feet. And it couldn't be changed to different channels because they were analog. So if you had like a few houses in the same neighborhood all had an Atari 2700, then you'd all be interfering with each other and playing the same game. You know, so someone would twizzle their nozzle. Twizzle their nozzle. Sounds like a good song. In one house, the house down the street would respond on the screen, wouldn't it? And you wouldn't be able to play any games. It's crazy. But it's an interesting sign of early controllers, early wireless controllers before we have what we have now. Uh, apparently this bloke picked up this machine off from a thrift, thrift store and sold it on eBay for like $3,000. Now, we won't go into the morals and ethics of that, mainly because I don't care, but it's just, it would have been nice for a proper collector to have found that machine for however it was, $30, and then had it in their collection. But you know, he found a machine, he's brought it to fruition in the news so we can all see it, and he made a hefty profit, so good on him. It's a moral of the story here for thrift shop owners is to always check stuff on eBay. That's easier said than done, isn't it? Oh, I saw an interesting article on firstmicroprocessor.com. Now this was actually a Facebook post from the Vintage PC Enthusiast group by Gaetana, Gaetano Marano. I, you know, I'm not good at pronouncing foreign names. We know this. I'm not even going to try and cover it up. The F14 Tomcat apparently is, I mean that's a plane, but the F14 Tomcat's plane, the plane, the F14 Tomcat had a chip inside which is apparently the first microprocessor. So it's not the Intel 4004, 4004, which many people believe is actually, actually, a different processor called... Called my light has just gone off. Yep, my light has gone off. Ignore that if you can. It's called the Central Air Data Computer. And yeah, it controlled the moving surfaces of the aircraft static pressure sensors, but the first integrated uh, microprocessor chipset. You probably already know that, you might already know that, but I saw it and I was pretty interested. And that's pretty much all I found, which I wanted to share with you. We've also got the news that Sonic Mania has come out, which if you look on YouTube, there are so many reviews that if you had all the sticks in the world and shook them, you would probably need more sticks to shake at them. Need more sticks because something like that comes out and YouTube is flooded. Need more sticks. I might do a video on it myself. Need more sticks. It's interesting that there's this game, isn't it? It's official release because there's been lots of Sonic fan games over the years which don't get very much press. I've done a few quick plays on some in the past. But this one, because it's an official release, <laughs> massive interest. Um, also, we're getting closer to the Super Nintendo Mini, aren't we? When's that? August? We're in August. What? When's it come out? November? October? This isn't very good for news, is it? I don't know what's going on. That will bring this video to a close. It was just a quick recap on kind of what's going on, but I don't really know what's going on apparently. And thanks for watching. Stay tuned maybe for next time and we'll do this again. See you soon. Goodbye.